Okay, everybody, we are in Massapequa Park on Long Island in Nassau County. This is a particularly horrible situation. Not that most of my videos are very uplifting, but this one's pretty bad. Uh, Roy DeMeo killed somebody in a case of a mistaken identity. Huge car chase starting from his house on 159 Whitewood Drive. It's actually right now, it's a Sunday, it's April 10th. This happened April 19th, 1979 at about 7 p.m. And right now it is about 6.31. So we're pretty on schedule with this. I have to wave that guy on. He had his turning signal on, I didn't turn. You can't hold it against people, what they do on the road. Okay, let's flip this around and get into it. Okay, so to start this off, it requires a little bit of backstory. Right now we're going to 159 Whitewood Drive, Roy DeMeo's house that this all started at, which I mentioned earlier. All right, so Roy DeMeo's right-hand man, whose name is Chris Rosenberg, who they considered to be like brothers, they were that close, did a deal with people down in Florida who he didn't know exactly who they were at the time, but they ended up being the Cuban cartel. Even if he did know, I don't know if he would care because that's how crazy the crew was. But he does a deal, a drug deal with cocaine. They have four people fly down from the Cuban cartel from Florida to New York. Once they land in New York, within a couple hours, they are all killed, dismembered, and disposed of, and they steal the cocaine. It sounds very crazy, but that was a Roy DeMeo crew thing. Kind of do what you want, take what you want, if you want it, type mentality. That's pretty much what led to this whole uh, story that I'm doing now. So obviously the Cuban cartel is not happy that the people they sent down all got killed for the situation. They even sent down another person that got killed also. I'm going to do a more in-depth story on that whole situation in general. Okay, back to this. Cuban cartel is not happy. They get in contact with the Gambino crime family, which Roy DeMeo is a part of. And they say, listen, we need Chris Rosenberg to be killed. It needs to make the newspaper so we know that it's real. That's the only way that we're going to resolve this as to not start a war between the Cuban cartel and the Italian mafia. So, of course, the responsibility of killing Chris Rosenberg falls on Roy DeMeo. That's how the mafia works. They get the closest person to you to kill you when it comes down to it. Chris Rosenberg, mind you, has no idea there's even a problem with the Cuban cartel. It never even makes it to him. So Roy DeMeo is stalling for a couple of weeks. He doesn't want to kill Chris. During this time, the Cuban cartel sends down a couple of enforcers to go talk to the people they're talking to, to get in contact with. And they're like, listen, they throw some threats around. Listen, if you don't do the job, we'll do it. And it's going to start something. So Roy hears about this and he's paranoid to death that he's going to be killed by the Cuban cartel. So one day he's sitting at his house with his first cousin, Joseph Guglielmo, G-U-G-L-I-E-L-M-O. There's a few different ways you could pronounce that. His nickname was Dracula. I've had a whole video on him. I'll put it in the description. The guy was sick. Maybe, maybe sicker than Roy DeMeo in some ways. And we all know Roy DeMeo's story. Uh, the rumor is that he has over 200 kills with, between him and his crew. Wild. Okay, we're pulling up on the house now. But like I said, they're held up in the house, paranoid that they're going to get killed. 159 Whitewood Drive. This house right here to the left. I'll hop out for a second and record. Of course, like I always do. Not the neighborhood you really want to do this to. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description of how mobbed up this neighborhood was back in the day. And kind of still is. But, yeah. I, I, I'll do it. I'll do it anyway for you guys. I'm not as scared.
saw paranoid Roy DeMeo and his cousin, Dracula, look outside and they see a Cuban assassin parked in front of their house. So they come outside to confront him. You can imagine he's probably parked right here. There's a driveway. This is pretty much exactly what the house looked like, by the way, when Roy was here. I'll do a walk back and forth. Um, they come outside with guns in hand and the person in the car obviously sees what's going on, throws the car in drive and drives right away, takes off. So, Roy and his cousin Dracula, it's out of the truck by the way, Roy and his cousin Dracula hop right into their Cadillac and chase him down. They start zooming away going to, heading towards Merrick Road. The chase ends up going all the way to East Farmingdale. I will obviously bring you all the way there. Don't worry about that at all. Back to the truck. Okay, so we'll do a little reenactment of um, shooting down this block. That's all you get from me. I don't like to stress the truck out. Um, I'll decide if I'm either going to speed up a lot of this footage or cut it up, but I'm sure I'm going to speed up some parts. But this is the route that they took. You take this road all the way up, it hits Merrick Road. They make a right on Merrick Road, they start heading east. And then they catch up to each other at uh, Merrick Road and Route 110, which is Broadway. So I will continue the story when we are at that intersection. It's an innocent person that Roy assumes is the Cuban cartel that is after him to kill him. And this dude sees them come out of the house with guns, gets, throws his car in gear, and drives off. They're both in Cadillacs, actually. So they're driving down this road, and I will continue when the story picks back up. Obviously a very big shopping area. There's shopping centers on each side. Busy main road in Long Island in Nassau County. So they estimated that hundreds of people saw this go down. Section here is Broadway, which is Route 110 and Merrick Avenue, Merrick Road. This is where they met up. A bunch of shots were fired off here. They estimated by the end of it all, they shot 20 shots at his car. Dracula, the cousin, just kept reloading the pistol and kept shooting at this kid. I don't think he was hit at this point. They make the left onto 110 and they continue on. chased by a random killer, an 
his head. Well, that, that part is true. And then the other one is chasing a Cuban assassin that was sent to kill him. They're driving over medians in the center. Now, this is 1979, so things were a little bit different than they are right now. I'm assuming that fence wasn't there in the middle. Driving over medians, blowing through red lights, swerving around cars, almost getting into accidents. Anything you can to get away from the killers and to chase who you think is a killer. This whole thing is a seven mile car chase before it finally comes to an end. We'll be back when, they, when there's more shooting. state. This is where it turns from Broadway into Broad Hollow Road, but it is still Route 110, continuing on towards the Republic Airport in Farmingdale. starts and we're pretty close to where this all comes to an end. Now you can see here how you can really pick up some speed in a car chase. I'm just going with traffic right now, pushing 50 miles an hour. So this is a wide section of road that you can be flying down. There's a shoulder here to pull up on, but this is the intersection. This is Conklin Street. This is the intersection where he gets into a car accident. The car they're chasing gets into a car accident, pops both front tires, and continues on for about 500 more feet up until this train track. Look how perfect this is. The shoulder opens up right here, right about to this train track. They pull up next to him. Okay, so right around here, I don't exactly know where. There's not a lot of crime scene footage. There's really no crime scene footage. I have one picture of this whole situation. They, this all came to an end. Roy DeMeo hops out once his car is fully disabled. Let's go around. Say hi to the truck. Again. So once the car is fully disabled, Roy DeMeo hops out and finishes him. Couple more shots to him, jumps back in his Cadillac. People said he walked away like a killer, like he hopped in his car like he was proud of himself and drove off. Not realizing yet what he did. Back to the truck. Like I was saying, Roy DeMeo was all proud of himself until the next day in the newspaper when it comes out that the person he killed was not a Cuban assassin and it was Dominic Ragucci, a Puerto Rican, half Puerto Rican, half Italian. That's how he mis mistook him for a Cuban person. That was 19 in the neighborhood because he was selling vacuums to pay his way through college. In no way, shape, or form was he involved in any organized crime or any criminal activity. And he just got caught up by this paranoid psychopath that chases him down for seven miles and guns him down for no reason at all. Just because he stopped in front of his house after one of his appointments to either 
figure out where he's going next or write some notes down from the sale that he either got or didn't get from that house down the block. It's a horrible story. So this then makes Nino Gaggi say, all right, Roy, you got to finish off Chris before any other innocent people die because of this. And like I said, I will have a whole nother video all about the Chris Rosenberg situation. But that is everything I have to tell you about this. Horrible story, I know. I feel horrible for the family. I'm sure to this day, it's not easy for them, even though it was that long ago. Something like that never, um, never leaves you, you know? So, see you guys in the next one.